got some young people in a culture that doesn't allow young people to talk or to, to, to uh, express themselves. How do we deal with that? I think the, the, one of the first things we need to look at is a lot of times we, we limit what we view of ministry. When you, when you look at the early church in the first century, they, they met house to house, they prayed with one another, they testified with one another, they worshiped together, they prayed together, they studied God's word together, and the church grew. It said God added to their number daily. The reason why God was adding to their number daily because they were not reliant on a one day a week service. Right. Then in addition to the specific calling, the young lady, uh, I, God, God has put a burden on your heart. So one of the questions is, what do I do with this burden? And we can't limit ministry to pulpit ministry because that, that's, that's a different thing. There's, I'm actually writing a book called Beyond the Pulpit. Because pulpit ministry has certain gifts, talents, and there's certain criteria for it, leadership, training, and things of that nature. But a lot of times we say, because I'm not in the pulpit, I don't have a ministry. But a lot of what we're talking about, the kids aren't coming into the church for ministry. We have to go to the kids. There's nobody stopping you from going to share the gospel with somebody and winning them to the Lord. And you don't need a title to do that. You don't need a position right. to do that. You don't need authority to do that. If you're a child of God, and that's how your voice gets shared, you can, walk, you can go down the street right now and lead somebody to Christ. And so I think part of it is asking ourselves, God, what do I do with this? What do I do with the calling on my life? What, what, what if I'm never called to speak on a Sunday morning? How do I share the gospel everywhere I can if I never have that opportunity in the pulpit? And even people I talk to that are called to the pulpit, I said, let the pulpit be your last spot of ministry. That's it. Let your life be the ministry, and if you end up at the pulpit, you end up at the pulpit. Right. All right, and, and let me say this. Just some, most of you don't know me. I've been at the same church since 1997. Amen. It's where I got saved. It's where I serve. I believe in the power of the pulpit ministry. I believe in what God has called us to do, but I believe that sometimes we limit ministry to the man with the three-point sermon, with a three-piece suit, and if I don't fit into that role, I don't have a ministry. All right, what would happen if every single Christian won one person to Christ? We would add a billion people to the body of Christ. So in that, I, I encourage you, ask God, what do I do with this? How do I live this out? Also, in a cultural context, sometimes our churches function more out of a cultural context than a biblical context. Yeah. Yeah. Some of that can be good and has strength. Some of it can be bad. But I think part of it is we've got to figure out how do we reach a generation one kid at a time in an effective way with God using us. Right. Don't worry about what God does with other people. What, God, what do, you want to, what do you want my life to look like? Amen. What do you want me to do so that I can help somebody come to know you? Amen. God bless you all.